Patella fracture. Patella fracture. As you know, patella is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. Why does a patella break? It is maybe due to indirect force by the violent contraction of the quadriceps muscle or by direct force or direct impact over the patella. Okay. Why is a patella fracture worrying? Because the posterior aspect of the patella has articular surface. The patello femoral articulation. The types of patella fracture as you can see transverse is most common number one undisplaced transverse is most common lower pole of the patella where this broken piece goes with the patella tendon and multifragmented undisplaced multifragmented displaced and this multifragmented fracture is sometimes called as a stellate fracture stellate fracture this is a vertical fracture which is relatively rare, rare and osteochondral fracture where a piece of cartilage and bone are together broken. This is patellar fracture. So radiographs taken are an anterior posterior radiograph, lateral and a skyline view specific for patella skyline view of the patella. You can clearly see the patellofemoral articulation in the skyline view. When the fracture is undisplaced, you can treat it with a cylinder cast cylinder cast and for transverse fracture which are displaced the treatment used is tension band wiring what is tension band wiring let us discuss so if this is the transverse fracture of the patella this is the force coming from the quadriceps tendon now the force coming from the quadriceps tendon is trying to distract the fracture fragments which is bad which is bad now we want forces which compress the fracture fragments so what are we going to do here here we pass two k wires connecting both the fracture fragments and make a loop Make a loop with a stainless steel wire for less S S wire. Now the speciality of this construct is that the distraction forces which are coming from the quadriceps tendon are converted into compression forces. Now when there are compression forces, there is healing. So this is the beautiful principle of tension band wiring. Okay. Let's quickly go through some named fractures of the lower limb. The first among that is the bumper fracture. Bumper fracture. Now, let us understand why a bumper's fracture occurs. Here, if you can see, the right lower limb of the person is stagnant. The foot is on the ground. Now, there is an impact from the lateral aspect of the right knee by this car, as you can see. So when there is an impact from the lateral aspect of knee joint, the force which is applied is valgus force, valgus force. So here the person is standing means there is axial loading, the, bump, the bumper of the car is hitting from the lateral aspect. So there is valgus and the fracture that occurs is of that lateral condyle of the proximal tibia. Lateral condyle of proximal tibia so this is what is called your bumper fracture this can be associated with ligament injuries like the medial collateral injury depending on the extent of the injury the next is the fracture shaft of the tibia fracture shaft of the tibia what is the treatment of choice intramedullary fixation with an interlocking nail okay internal fixation with interlocking nail conserve it how do you conserve a tibia fracture by applying a above knee cast initially and once the fracture is sticky the above knee cast is converted to something called as 
patellar tendon bearing cast patellar tendon bearing cast this is your shaft of tibia fracture next is runner fracture what is a runner fracture the distal third of fibula fracture which is a stress fracture stress fracture occurs due to a repetitive injury is called as runner fracture how is this treated by immobilization and rest what is toddler's fracture this is distal third tibia undisplaced fracture in a child this is called as toddler fracture treated by plaster of paris application